Hi everyone, Mr. Leonard here. Today we're going to be talking about chemical and physical changes. Now, just a quick note before we get started, I apologize about this crazy color scheme that's over me. It's not some Instagram thing. It's a combination of this camera and this fluorescent lighting, this compact fluorescent lighting that I have in my house. So, unfortunately, it kind of looks like uh, I'm an Oompa Loompa, if you know what that is. So, we will be talking about changes today. So, I decided to start with this slice of pizza. I had pizza last week for dinner, and as I was eating the pizza, there are two types of changes that occurred. There was physical and chemical changes. Now, almost every substance or every substance that's out there goes through chemical and physical changes at some point. Well, when I had the pizza and I was eating it, I was chewing it, I was breaking it down, um, that was an example of a physical change. So, uh, that was the uh, chewing. So, the chewing was my, the breaking of the pizza. I could take it, it was still pizza in my mouth. The chemical changes were when my body started to digest it. So the chemical part was the digestion. And the digestion process takes the pizza and the different parts of it, like the carbohydrates and the pro proteins and, and whatnot, and they break them down so that my body can use that so that I have energy. When atoms are broken apart from molecules, it releases energy, and that's what enables us to survive. So this is a very important thing to our lives. And uh, also, I want to start with this because just pizza is awesome. So we'll go with that. Now, for physical changes, there's a few important things that you need to note. The appearance can change, but the substance is still the same. Triple underline there. So it's still the same thing. There's a number of things that we can do. You can see those listed over to the left. Um, that is the breaking, the cutting, the melting, the dissolving, and boiling. I'll go through a few examples of those. To start, I'll take this piece of paper here. I could take this paper. I could rip it. I could rip it into smaller pieces. It's still paper. This has not become something new. It is still the same thing. I could take it. I could crumple it. I could punch it. I could do whatever I want to it. It's still paper okay so the important part as we go through these examples is that the substance remains the same thing let's start with breaking so here we have this uh, karate master guy who is taking his uh, hand and just laying down the law on these bricks here broke those bricks uh, right down the middle and when he broke those, it's still bricks. It's just that they're in smaller pieces, all right? So there's an example of a physical change. Those bricks were still the same. Here we have a lady who's chopping wood. So she's taking this ax, bringing the ax down on those logs and breaking them into smaller pieces. So the ax is serving to cut it, basically. It's still wood. It's not becoming something new. Sim similarly, we have this lady sawing wood. We have uh, this piece of wood over here and this piece of wood over here. It will get sawed in half, but it's still wood. Still the same substance. Also, we could take a substance and melt it. This is a puddle of water. Above it is an ice cube. Both of these things, let me change my color, are H2O. This version is solid, and this version is liquid. And there we go. Then that version is liquid. So we have solids and liquids, same thing. Both of them are H2O. So it's not becoming something new. It's just changing its state of matter. Remember, 
there are four main states of matter that we talk about, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. So if we could heat up this liquid, uh, boil it, if you will, the last thing on our list, it would eventually become water vapor. It's still H2O, still the same thing. We could also dissolve something. So here we have uh, probably some nice person taking some sugar, dumping it in their tea or coffee or whatever that may be. You probably do this, or you, at least you see other students do this, coming into school with Dunkin' Donuts and things like that, filled with sugar. You can't see the sugar in the drink, but it's in there. Could you separate this out? Sure. You could evaporate whatever liquid you have, and it would just leave the sugar behind. It's not bonding and becoming something brand new. It's just sugar and tea or sugar and coffee. All right, so when one substance dissolves into another and we can't see it anymore, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily bonded with it. So this would be another physical change. Okay, finally we have boiling. As I mentioned that before, for boiling, we have H2O in here as a liquid. It's starting to come out here and eventually it makes its way as water vapor. Um, growing up, I was in you know, I would go to friends' houses and stuff, and I would always ask, you know, they would have a, a wood stove. And I would always ask, why do you have that pot of water on top of your wood stove? It was to keep the moisture in the house, because heat can hold a lot of moisture and things would dry out, especially people's skin. You may have noticed that in the winter time. Well, what they would do is put the liquid water, as we see here, on top of the wood stove, it would heat slowly, evaporate into the air, and then keep everything at a comfortable moisture level. So that's why people would do that. So I never knew that as a kid, but as I got older, you know, just asking around, you know, that's the reason why. So again, all of those things remain the same substance. With chemical changes though, the substance is changing. I'll underline this in three colors. Uh, this is very important. So the substance is changing. It's becoming something brand new. On the left, I have a bunch of examples and indicators, things that tell you that a chemical change has occurred. Let's go back to our piece of paper. So I have this piece of paper that I punched and crumpled and did other things to and ripped. And you're saying, how could, you, how could he possibly chemically change that. This is just a rip. This is a physical change. I could make this into a brand new substance very easily with this. I could take this. We can see that it's burning right here. All right. I will just put that out slightly. You see all the smoke that's coming from here. All the smoke is carbon and carbon dioxide and other things that are being released from this and that paper has become something totally new if I can pick this up these are the ashes that are just left over you can see this is real fine powdery stuff this becomes something brand new I can never get that piece of paper back you've probably seen a thousand movies where the bad guy has to burn papers so that they can't find the evidence or whatever they're all those papers are undergoing chemical changes, so we can never get those things back. That's a huge indicator. So uh, even if I just check that off here, um, it's tough to reverse. And we'll go through a few examples as we go further on. All right, here we have this picture of uh, this person drinking this, or smelling at least, this sour milk. So if something changes its smell or taste, that's a huge indicator indicator um, that a chemical change has occurred. It's not a normal milk now, it's spoiled milk. So there's extra compounds and molecules in there that uh, don't taste good to us and aren't good for us. Okay, moving along. Um, on the same note of uh, changing its smell or taste when I was a kid, I would have uh, that brownie batter a lot. You probably have done the same thing, or raw cookie dough. Mom or dad don't like it because there's raw eggs in there, but it tastes delicious. And when it's baked, it tastes 
different, so the taste has changed. We can't ever get these brownies back into that form because it has undergone a chemical change. Okay, very simple. Also, we can have the color change. Tonight I made pork chops for the family. And now let's look at this pork chop here. It has some pink and other things there. This is the same pork chop right there. It has changed its color. It's text, um, or I guess the outside of it, its texture is a little bit different. But um, you see some, mostly the color changes here from the grill marks, right? That's carbon that's on there. Um, the charred stuff, the black stuff. So that's, um, that's a chemical change. Something new has been made there. We can never, ever take cooked pork chops and make them raw again because they've gone through a chemical change. So we have completed our first few here. So we completed these and we talked about this. So the next one is about tarnishing. Here we have a normal silver spoon. Here we have a tarnished spoon. The tarnished spoon gets these black spots on it, these yellow sections. If uh, mom or dad or grandma or grandpa have actual silver wear, the, you know, the stuff made of real silver, they need to polish it because it tarnishes. The surface of it is changing. Uh, down here we have the Statue of Liberty, what it looks like. Here's what it would look like if it did not oxidize. So if it oxidizes, that's the same thing that changes iron to rust. It becomes something different. So this is this is copper and this is it as it has oxidized. So it changes its color and looks that greenish color. Okay. Very, very simple um, when you can see that, that huge change. Also, if heat or light are produced, just like the paper that I burned before, this is all that's left of that guy. Uh, not much there. We saw lots of light that was released um, and also heat. So as it got close to my fingers, I could feel the heat that was coming from that. Uh, you notice all these little things here. All those are people. They're real far away from this thing because it's putting off tons of heat because it's undergoing chemical changes. This wood is becoming carbon dioxide and other chemicals that are going into our atmosphere. Also fireworks. So fireworks uh, release light and heat. So, or light and heat are produced, not released, they should say. So they're produced. Uh, we can't take fireworks and reuse them. Once we've blown them up, they're done. So we can't ever get those things back. Finally, uh, one of our last things are bubbles. So when we put one substance into another and it bubbles, we know that something new is being made. In this case, all these little bubbles that are here, you know, traveling up from this Alka-Seltzer, carbon dioxide probably, well, something new has been made. So that's an example of a chemical change. You've also probably seen these horror movies where you know people have to stick their hands in jars of acid to get things, and their you know their skin starts to bubble. And stuff, you know, as crazy as that sounds, that's also a chemical change. Their hands would never ever be the same way that it was before. So it is changing. Okay. Also, um, we have the tough to reverse category, which is kind of what I started with. We'll also finish off with this category. Here's uh, some bread that I had for dinner. I cut it, which is not a physical change. Cutting it is kind of like ripping. That's a physical change, but what I did to the bread was a chemical change. I toasted it. So we have a new substance here, especially along these edges where it's brown there in this kind of golden yellow. It's tough to reverse. We can't ever get this back. All right. Now just to uh, go all the way back to the beginning where we started, we started out with this pizza. When we eat pizza, we use it. Whatever we don't use, 
we get rid of. So, <laughs> so if uh, this dog here, I had a dog when I was in high school named Plato. He would eat everything and also uh, do a lot of what you see here. And uh, that's the stuff that that dog did not need to survive or uh, to provide his energy. So we could never ever make that stuff back into a pizza because it has undergone a chemical change. So there you have it, chemical and physical changes.